Hi everybody, it's Chris from Slideable Racing, and today's project is reassembling my Volvo Penta Outdrive transom assembly. So, I uh, I want to um, first do something that I, I hate to do, um, but Google has made it really hard for us smaller channels to uh, to earn any money anymore um, unless we have a thousand subscribers. So, if you could. Go click that subscribe button if you don't mind, and uh, and help me out a little if you appreciate my videos. Um, thanks. All right, enough with the uh, with the begging, and we'll move on to uh, to the fun stuff. So I have uh, my my uh, 2004 Cobalt 250, and uh, and what I found as I was cleaning up this winter was that there was a whole lot more corrosion uh, from the saltwater exposure of the previous owners. Than I kind of thought when we bought it, and so um, so it, in an effort to uh, to clean it all up, I tore everything down on the transom this winter, and uh, bead blasted it, and now we uh, we got some some paint on it, and we're gonna put it all back together. So the first the first step uh, that we're gonna do is we're gonna and and I I took these down pretty much uh, to bare metal, so the first step we're gonna do is. Uh, reinstall the uh, the bushings that go on both the uh, this is the part that's that swivels okay and we're gonna put them back in this guy and then there's also one that goes in the main uh, housing that it actually attaches to the transom in this guy right up top so that's our first step oh uh, the kit that I got is uh, is the seal kit uh, so it's this guy right here it's part number 385 8631 and uh, and as you can see it comes with just about everything you need to um, to reassemble the transom um, as far as seals go I also bought in addition to that I bought uh, a new bellows a new uh, um, this is the gimbal bellows. I did not bother buying a new exhaust bellows because frankly it stays open if the trim is up at all. I don't, there's uh, nothing wrong with this one as far as that goes. Um, I did pick up a new hose. Uh, this is the hose that goes from the um, plastic cooling port uh, back up to the, the main housing. Um, I had to cut mine to get it disassembled because the plastic port was so um, stuck. That guy's in here somewhere, right here. This was was so stuck into uh, into I think they call it the the gimbal housing or the pivot housing. Um, it was really really stuck in there. In fact, if you see, you can see there was a lot of corrosion right in this area here, where all that salt water just sat. Um, and this was really stuck in there, so the only way for me to get this all out was to actually cut that hose. And then um, I also ordered, uh, I had to get some new hydraulic hoses because uh, the corrosion was really bad on on the uh, the fittings that, that the hoses um, used. They, these were all stuck in there really good, and there was no way to get enough uh, purchase on these heads to get them undone. The only way I could do that was by getting a six-point socket on the end of them so that I could take them out without stripping the hell out of them. And, uh, and so the only way to get a six-point socket on was to cut them off. Um, but that wasn't too bad because I had used so much heat to get the, the pin out that uh, I had actually melted the end of some of those hoses. So it uh, was unfortunate but necessary. So with that uh, introduction, uh, we'll get right to it. Uh, we'll press in those these uh, bushings. Oh, um, there was one O-ring that did not come in my kit. Actually, it was the same O-ring that goes on this guy. Every other O-ring and seal was in the kit except for that one, so I'm going to have to uh, either it was accidentally not included or, uh, or for some reason it's left out of that kit, so I'll just have to go and source an O-ring that size. So on to the bushings. The way that I'm doing the bushings is uh, I'm going to put a, a little a little grease on them to lube them up a little, a little grease on the inside, and then I'm just uh, using a bolt and a couple of 
uh, off the shelf makeshift bushings to uh, press it together. Okay, next, we'll press the bushing into that guy. Okay, so now we've got the four different um, bushings pressed in. The, red, the ones that came off were a fiberglass kind of material. These appear to be similar, but possibly carbon fiber or something. Um, but some kind of laminated uh, tubing material, very smooth on the inside. Um, the other things that are pressed in, I pressed in before the paint. I pressed in the seal that goes on the back side of the gimbal bearing. That was included in the kit, and the gimbal bearing itself, which is new, which was not included in the kit. You have to get a new one of those. Um, I did those before because I wanted to be able to put a little bit of heat onto this um, to make it easier to press that in um, and I didn't want to heat it up after it was painted. So now we'll move on to uh, some of the assembly. So before I disassembled the parts before, I did mark, actually before I cut them off before, I did mark um, which of these ports went to which uh, trim cylinder uh, because I knew that I might have to cut them off and I wanted to make sure that I matched each specific shape uh, because they fit in just right to uh, the right port. So on each of the old poses I did write down uh, which line went to which port. So now I'm going to match those up and, uh, and reassemble loosely the, uh, the fittings that go into this manifold uh, before I place it into the, uh, the spot back in the housing and, uh, and get the positions um, finalized. Okay, so I've, uh, I've put all the, the lines back in loosely and uh, based on my previous experience, um, of having to cut the old ones off. I did a put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads of these uh, flare nuts. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I have this in place. I don't have the o-ring on this guy yet. I just have it loosely in place. And uh, I'm just going to snug these up. Um, I, modified, I modified a little wrench um, so that I could actually try to turn these a little bit. Uh, with the, It's a 12 point uh, box end wrench that I cut the end off. So I'm going to snug these up while holding the lines in position so that uh, the right angles of the, of the lines are, are in place. Now 
we're gonna put the, uh, oops, take this guy out. Now, we will put the O-ring back on the manifold and I'm gonna put some silicone grease around it. This is the same kind of grease that uh, is used for pool and jacuzzi uh, hot tub o-rings. And with that in place, now we can uh, put the, uh, the washer and nut to hold the manifold down. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is uh, we're going to install the, uh, the grease nipple. Um, I think the, uh, if you look at it, the, the hoses are kind of right in the way to make a smooth shot, but in some ways it might be better. So I'm going to put them on top and, uh, and a little bit of, of friction from the hoses should help hold this in place a little bit better, I think. next step is to take the wires for our anti-corrosion leads and the trim tilt sensor and pass the ceiling grommets through their holes. Once again, I'm going to put some of the silicone O-ring grease in. There is this little clip that's supposed to go on the end. This was missing from my trim cylinder. My trim cylinder was held in place with just uh, some, some RTV grease. And next, the trim cylinder. I, I'm sorry, the, the uh, trim tilts sending switch, sending sensor. And uh, I'll put that clip on later. The next part to install is the coolant pickup hose um, tube. Okay. And then the next thing we'll put on is the shift cable routing tube.
the shift cable routing tube is this guy. This is what you run the shift cable through because the uh, the outside water level probably comes up here and you don't want to get in the boat. So this gets a new O-ring that's part of the kit. So I'm gonna put that on to put some of the uh, some of the O-ring grease on it. And then, uh, then we can turn this guy back over for now. Actually, there is one more thing we could do in this position, and that's to install the uh, install the trim uh, supply hoses. And I'm going to put new O-rings on these guys. And also a little bit of anti-seize. I'm going to back up and do that afterwards. Now there is another O-ring down here, but we'll put that on. Um, we'll put that on at the end, right before we're going to put it on the boat. There's a, a gasket that goes around the outside, and then an O-ring that goes here. We'll put that on at the very end. Okay, so the, the reason that I looked a little confused there when I was trying to uh, install the, the hose was because here's the hose that came out, this one right here, and here's the new one. And if you look carefully, the new one's a lot longer than the old one. And, uh, and the reason I had to cut the old one was because this guy over here, um, the, the, the plastic hose that goes right through there, that the tube that connects up to the inlet water was so corroded that I couldn't get him out when the when this piece was on the back of the boat. So I had to cut that hose just so I could get it all disassembled. And uh, and so now I ordered the new one, no big deal. And now I can't uh, 
can't seem to solve the puzzle. Well, I went and got the old pieces, and the, and the reason that I can't solve the puzzle is because the old, the old one's a lot shorter. Um, mostly, it looks like the new one has this little extra hook up here, and it's a little bit longer down here. So I guess I'm going to have to trim it um, to fit. And if you, what's weird is if you look in the uh, if you look in the Volvo illustration. Sorry. Now if you look in the Volvo illustration, um, this guy right here, he doesn't have the little hook that comes around the corner like mine does. There we go. Oh, not at it. So he uh, he comes around the corner, whereas the one on the drawing shows it coming straight out. So I'm gonna have to trim that hose and uh, get that guy secured on that end, and uh, maybe we'll trim the other end of the hose after uh, when we're when we're ready and in installing this piece here. Okay, so uh, I got the the coolant feed hose installed. Um, whether I, I'll need to trim some of that off, we'll see once I get the uh, once I get this guy in place. I did uh, install the the gimbal bellows in this piece. Um, I would suggest that it's easier to put it in here first, and then slip it on this and tighten the bolt, um, tighten the clamp afterwards, rather than trying to uh, put it on here and then do it through there because it was easier being able to stick my hand through there and manipulate that uh, that inner ring around. And then I put the exhaust bellows on and clamped that down and you'll notice that the uh, the grounding um, strap goes on those clamps as well. Uh, there's two on this one and one on that one. And, uh, and so then the next thing to install before my heater kicks in is, uh, is our steering arm. So I'm going to uh, put the O-ring, there's a washer and an O-ring that go down here. I'm going to put those in place and then we'll slide this guy uh, into position. First, the O-ring goes on the end of the, uh, the alignment um, boss, I guess you'd call that, for, the, uh, for this half. Okay, uh, now there are some of these plastic washers that need to get inserted into here uh, and uh, I've got to figure out how many we need there. Um, the illustration shows using uh, one, let's see, one above up here in between that guy, and then two down below. So uh, I'm not sure if that's actually how many they use or. A suggestion to take up the clearance, uh, so I got to figure that out. But on the other side of the steerer, so now on this side, and in fact I got to install the steerer while we're putting that part in, but this goes in, so I'll have to put this back, slide that in, and then um, actually first this goes in there, so we'll have to line that up on top of the o-ring properly, and then uh, this goes in, and then uh, the washer and bolt would go in on, on top of that. Uh, at least that's how the illustration shows it. I probably should have paid better attention as I was taking it apart, but there was a, that was pretty, so it shows you the steerer, there's that washer, and then the, uh, the phenolic um, bushing that we installed earlier. So let me get all these parts together. The steering arm is now installed, 
and uh, underneath. So one one thing to point out um, as I was doing that, that washer that goes in underneath the steering arm, that was kind of a bear to install because it wanted to fall out. So I used uh, I used some some assembly goo, um, some green assembly goo that I had from uh, the transmission rebuild videos that you saw, and that uh, worked really well to hold that washer in place. So if you have anything like that, or even just some regular grease, you can use that to hold that in place. And then I, I, um, I did put some grease underneath this washer to try to keep that um, interface between those two parts um, at least somewhat resistant to, uh, to getting rusted together like they were before, before I disassembled them. And so now, um, now I can reinstall the uh, the lower pin on this guy. That's that's this guy here. Um, goes back in place here. But what I wanted to show was that I did put the one washer that they show in the illustration in, and I still have enough room to slide another one in there. So I'm going to stick another washer in there um, to take up that slack. And uh, before I assemble them, the kit. The kit they send you, they give you a, a pile of these washers, a whole bunch that um, are just plastic on each side, and then a few, four actually, to be precise, that have this adhesive. For the one that I used here, I put the adhesive one in so that it would hold its place. Um, but now for this one, I think I can just, I can just use the non-adhesive one. Uh, so the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to install. Uh, this fellow right here back in place and uh, and I'll grease up this pin first although it is a it it was a press fit into the upper piece if I recall so uh, let's see how that goes I've now attached the uh, anodes that go to the bottom of the transom assembly uh, there's for, uh, so in addition to attaching this as I said I would, um, and I'll note that um, I only put one of these washers in because the draw, though the drawing said to use two, when I put two in, this was um, extremely stiff. So I went to one, and one is loose, but uh, two makes it really hard to turn, so I left one for now. Um, it's not the hardest thing in the world to change if I needed to change it later. The, uh, I put this on with the four uh, screws that mount through the um, anti-corrosion uh, wiring harness. And then I also added uh, the two bolts that, uh, that supplement the attachment of the steering shaft to, uh, to the, I forget what this is called, the pivot um, or, or uh, casting. And there's a, a grounding strap that goes on this and attaches to the back of the uh, this this piece here. Um, so the other thing you have to do in addition to attaching this is uh, you have to attach your um, the plastic uh, coolant pickup hose. So I did trim that off. Um, I trimmed off as high as I could. It, the tube flared out, which was too big for this particular design. So I trimmed that off right at the highest mount. Um, I put new O-rings on, and um, and based on what I could tell, you do need to be careful about the orientation of uh, the clamp. If you put it in any other way, it probably won't fit correctly into uh, the other housing. So now I'm going to work on taking this housing, and I'm going to mount the grounding strap. Um, the grounding strap attaches here and then we've got to fit the the boot on to uh, to the, the gimbal um, the gimbal bore and uh, and then fit the coolant tube through there and before I do that I am just gonna uh, just so it doesn't get lost I'm gonna mount the shift cable clamp in place um, just so that it's in place and not lost for when uh, we need to use that later. And then we'll try to install uh, that piece onto uh, the pivot arm. I've fed the coolant pickup tube through there and put the nut on. I've also worked the bellows around the gimbal uh, housing. 
and then I've attached the ground strap, as I said, underneath inside. Now what I've got to do is I've got to put these um, shoulder bolts through and thread them into um, the, uh, the housing itself. But before I do that, I'm just going to add a little red Loctite so that they don't come loose. So with the hose clamp tightened and the nut tightened around the intake uh, pickup tube, we'll now be able to go and, uh, and reattach our trim uh, position sensor. And then the next step would be to attach the pistons uh, and the rest of our ground, uh, ground wires, the um, anti-corrosion wires as well as installing the top cap. And when I install the top cap in the O-ring here and the O-ring around this, I'm gonna use a little bit of um, gasket sealant to hold it in place. Let's try that again. So, after attaching the top cap with the, uh, the O-ring in place and uh, a little bit of adhesive in there and then attaching the, uh, the ground straps for the anti-corrosion system. You can slap on your new uh, Volvo Penta sticker and call it a day. Before you put it back in the transom, uh, you will want to attach all the gaskets on the back. Um, so you're going to have an O-ring here. You're going to have the foam gasket that goes all the way around. And then up at the top, you're going to have a couple of uh, gaskets there. I'm just going to get some rubber washers and glue them in place. Um, and uh, and then you can can put it back in the boat. Have a great day. Outdrive addendum. So I, as I was putting the finishing touches and installing the uh, trim cylinders on, I discovered that I had made an error and I wanted to come back and just highlight it so that uh, other people don't make it as well. Um, when you're putting the hydraulic lines onto the trim cylinders, there's two different uh, fitting shapes. One is bent and one is straight. The straight one goes on the lower fitting, the bent one goes on the upper fitting. Both both sides are the same. So both bent fitting tubes should route to the same spot in the manifold. Um, and in this case you can see I actually had mine, mine uh, labeled LU and RU, means left upper and right upper, and LL and RL is left lower and right lower. And um, I had one straight fitting and one bent fitting going into, the, uh, into each one. So I had to go and fix that, otherwise my cylinders would have been fighting each other when I went to uh, hit the switch. The other thing I wanted to point out is the ground strap routing. So uh, there's a ground strap um, that comes in with the wires for the uh, anti-corrosion um, circuitry. The upper one attaches to the water in the hose clamp, then there was one more fitting down that goes to the, to the bellows hose clamp, another one down goes to the exhaust hose clamp, and then it comes um, Actually, then it goes down to the bottom, to one of the bottom bolts. And then it comes back up to the side, to this um, bolt on the side. And then that end piece goes down to the back of, um, of the, what would be the port side trim cylinder. Then there's another short ground strap on the starboard side trim cylinder that goes to one of the mounting bolts underneath. And then there's a longer... Um, ground strap that ties into your outermost piece here in the back corner and it comes back down around and attaches to um, that nut on the that bolt on the side again right there. So uh, those are some of the some of the things that aren't well spelled out in the manual that uh, I wanted to try to include here. So once again good luck and I hope this video helps you out.